at how you would create a table of values as well as create a chart based on those table of values. So um, in this particular experiment we're doing, uh, we're of course looking at two variables here. What's the effect of height on uh, drop width when we talk about blood here? So height is going to be our, our x variable here, and that is going to be the first thing we put in here. And you can even put in an x if you want. And then the width of the drop would be our y variable, of course. And so let's say we were to create a sample field of data. Uh, one more thing that I forgot to include up here is just the, the units. And so um, let's put this in here as well. I suppose that our height is going to be in centimeters, right? And then our width, that is going to be in millimeters. So let's say I were to have like a, a broad array of uh, values here for our independent variables. So like let's go by 20s. You know, that would be kind of an easy thing to control for, I feel like. And maybe I go up to, I don't know, 160, 180, uh, just because Anna is like, she's got to be like 160 some centimeters tall. And we could check with the conversion there. She's five foot six. But let's say I get this uh, range of width values here. And I'm, I'm totally going to make this up, you know, like 11.1. 11.4, 11. 11. Oops. Uh, we'll do 11.7, we'll go 11.8, you know, maybe um, 11.9, and then I think I'll jump to like a 12.5. And I'm really exaggerating here because I, I'd usually go by like a half a millimeter. Honestly, I'm not a, a machine, of course, so I wouldn't be able to tell these decimal values. But the idea is that you would see some sort of a scatter plot here when we create a chart. And that's what I want to show you how to do. So. What I want you guys to do is get your table in here, or at least your data values, and I want you to highlight both uh, columns worth of data, including the titles, because what we're going to do is go to Insert. Um, we're also going to go to Chart. Um, so there's a few commands we're going to follow here. Um, the neat thing is that it's going to default to a chart, and in this case, it defaults to the scatter plot, which is amazing. I know that Ethan will love this, so um, but you can change the chart to any other type that you would like here. Um, what I want to show you, though, is the scatter plot, because this is going to be our uh, format from which we can form our standard curve is what we call it, you know, scientifically. So what I want you to see is that there was an upward trend here with this data that I totally just imagined. Um, and you can see that it's labeling your x-axis down here as the height in centimeters and your y-axis as the width in millimeters. So you can actually see a relationship here as the, as the height increases from which the drop fell. You can see that the width of the drop is increasing in width. So, um, you know, we could kind of make a connection here and maybe say that there's a trend. So it's not an exact trend. We're going to find a trend line. Um, and you're probably used to this in, say, an algebra class. You have to find a, a line of fit. So we're going to find the line of best fit. And I want you to notice that I went to the customize option here. We're going to head down to series. And then from here, we're going to scroll all the way down until you see this option that says trend line. I'm going to go ahead and op, you know, click on this option. And the neat thing is that's going to fold, unfold, excuse me, more options here. What I want you to go is the label. And what we're going to do is label this with using the equation. And the neat thing about this is that our equation is given is this y equals mx plus b or linear relationship. And so you can see that our, our m here, or our slope, is this 0 0.0174 next to the x there, so our coefficient of x. And then our constant is our, our y-intercept here. And so I can tell you that algebraically these things have significance, but the y-intercept in this case scientifically doesn't have a lot of meaning because it would mean that, you know, if we were to drop this as uh, you know, from a height of zero millimeters or centimeters, excuse me, um, it would be at an initial height of 10.6 um, uh, centimeters. So I want you to understand that this is just a model. But at the same time, this slope, though, does mean something. And remember, the slope is rise over run. It's telling you change in y versus change in x. So, you know, literally, this is telling you that your width of your drop is going to go up positively by this amount, 0 0.0174 millimeters for every centimeter that you add in height. So the important thing is going to be here that we can understand the drop width on the floor um, that we found, um, and we can extrapolate from that. That is, we can work backwards and say, so what height must it have dropped from based on your model here? So the more data points you have, the better. Um, just want you guys to choose a good array of points and get a good set of data. Cheers.